Jehovah's Witnesses are a household name in the United States. The U.S. Religion Census in 2020 counted them as the ninth largest religious group in the U.S., with more adherents than the Episcopal Church and Churches of Christ combined. Those who have studied out their history know about Charles Taze Russell, who founded the Watchtower Society in 1881 and led the early movement that later produced the Jehovah's Witnesses. The early movement self-identified as Bible students and didn't use the name of Jehovah's Witnesses. That came later. After Russell died in 19. 1916, the next president of the Watchtower Society, Joseph Rutherford, was controversial. Many of the Bible students under Russell's leadership didn't stay with the Watchtower Society for long. Instead, they often stuck to the teachings of Russell and continued to go by the name of Bible students. In 1931, Rutherford introduced the name Jehovah's Witnesses, and according to some sources, three quarters of the Bible students under Russell had left by then. In 2010, Bible student Kenneth Rawson wrote the booklet, Pastor Russell founded the Bible students, not Jehovah's Witnesses. One thing the book says is, the phrase Pastor Russell's Bible students is frequently used in this booklet to distinguish them from Watchtower followers. These Bible students highly esteem Pastor Russell as the one used at the end of the age to dispense the truth during the end times. However, they do not blindly accept whatever he taught, like the Watchtower followers have to accept everything they are taught. Pastor Russell's Bible students prove all things by the scriptures and individually hold fast that which they think is scripturally correct. The booklet also says, If you belong to an organization that has dictatorial rule over each congregation, then you cannot be one of Pastor Russell's Bible students who cherishes the autonomy of every congregation of Bible students. If you believe Jehovah's Witnesses have replaced the nation of Israel in God's plan, then you are not one of Pastor Russell's Bible students who is proclaiming worldwide that God is regathering natural Israel to its ancient homeland. Bible students still reproduce and republish Charles Russell's books and articles on their websites and hold to his positions in several areas that the Watchtower Society and Jehovah's Witnesses no longer do. The Watchtower Society no longer publishes Russell's books. North Seattle Bible Students has his picture in their website header. Bible student websites and organizations often use these symbols that Russell used, like the cross and the crown. For example, the International Bible Students Association website, Beyond the Watchtower website, Columbus Bible Students, and others. There is no central organization for Bible students today, so each group operates independently. Some other organizations or websites that are part of the movement include BibleResources.info, the Dawn Bible Students Association, HarvestTruths.com, BibleStudentsDaily.com, and many others. There are other groups that have much of the same history. Wikipedia has this chart of the history of the movement, and the group being referred to here is known on that chart as Associated Bible Students. Though they have some connections with the Free Bible Students, there are also some major differences, since Free Bible Students have, in many cases, disagreed more with Russell. And this video is not about that smaller group. Other names used include Independent Bible Students and International Bible Students. The book Pastor C.T. Russell, Messenger of Millennial Hope by Charles Redeker and published online by Beyond the Watchtower says, The Bible students have properly been categorized as a very conservative evangelical Protestant group of Adventist background, differing from the larger denominations by its own distinctive emphases. The Adventist background comes from the Adventist influence upon Russell and early Bible students. Russell mentioned how he had stumbled upon Adventism and heard preaching from an Adventist minister that re-established his faith in the divine inspiration of the Bible. He said, Although Adventism helped me to know single truth, it did help me greatly in the unlearning of errors and thus prepared me for the truth. The greatest theological distinctive of Bible students is their belief that the Father alone is the Almighty God and Jesus is not. For example, the book The Lord Our God is One Lord, published by the Bible Students Congregation of New Brunswick, says, Whenever the scriptures use the word God in the sense of supreme deity, they refer to the Father alone. Thus, in prayer, Jesus calls his Father the only true God, excluding himself. The Bible, in fact, refers to the Heavenly Father as Jesus' God. Bible students teach that Jesus existed before he became a human. He was the word or mouthpiece of Jehovah. He was associated with his father since the earliest dawn of creation and was a direct creation of his father, which is the meaning of him being the only begotten son. Jesus took on a perfect, not fallen, human nature. 
he was a perfect man. He was not a blend of two natures. He left his spiritual life to be made flesh in Mary's womb. He received the Holy Spirit at his water baptism, and up until that point he was simply the man Jesus, but then became the Christ or Messiah. When he resurrected, Jesus was exalted to a divine nature. He never had both natures at one time. When Jesus was exalted to the divine nature, he became immortal, something that originally only Jehovah had. He was no longer human after his resurrection, but did appear in various human forms. Although the Bible refers to Jesus as the mighty God, this does not mean Jesus is the almighty God, but that he is highly exalted in the divine arrangement, and that the Creator is pleased to have him recognized as a mighty God and be worshipped. Another name for Jesus is Michael, as found in Daniel 12.1. Bible students say that the Holy Spirit has been construed to be a personality equal in power and glory to the Father and Son, but that this is a misunderstanding. The Holy Spirit is the holy power or influence of God. Baptism is done by immersion and is for believers only and not infants. Of communion, the Christian Questions website says that Jesus' sacrifice is pictured by the unleavened bread, and the wine is a symbol of the blood, indicating a memorial or symbolic view of the elements. It is observed annually on the anniversary of Jesus' death and called the memorial service or memorial celebration. Baptism and communion are not called sacraments or even ordinances generally. The Bible is 66 books. It is divinely inspired, a work not of men, and a direct revelation of the Creator. However, Bible students also believe that the Bible has often been misrepresented when people mistake its symbolic language as literal. Bible students take issue with some of the verses printed in most Bibles today, often giving reasons for this based in textual critical evaluation. For example, Revelation 20 verse 5a, the rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were completed, is viewed as not an authentic part of scripture. And John 1 verse 1 and 2 should say that the word or logos was a God, not the word was God. The Don Bible Students book, Our Bible Translated, gives a list of some Bible translations from most to least faithful. The top three are the Sacred Name Restoration Bible, New World Translation of Jehovah's Witnesses, and the Complete Jewish Bible. On creation, the book God's Grand Plan of the Ages criticizes the view that all varieties of plants and animals were formed without intelligence. It says, frogs do not become birds and apes do not become humans. God created kinds of animals, and though variations can emerge within a species, each created kind is fixed. They reject that there were any humans before Adam and Eve, who were created about 6,000 years ago. However, they do not teach that the Bible says what the age of the earth or universe is. The Christian Questions website says, In fact, we believe that the earth is very old. Scientists used to think the earth was about 100 million years old. They now theorize that it is about 4.5 billion years old. They say that the dinosaurs were long gone when God created Adam, extinct likely 65 million years ago, and that we do not know how old the earth is. The days of creation were long periods of time and could have been billions, millions, or thousands of years. Three epochs of world history are identified. The world that then was, from creation to the flood, under the administration of angels, then this present evil world, from the flood until the establishment of the kingdom of God, under the limited control of Satan, and finally, the world to come. All three worlds or dispensations take place on one literal earth which abides forever. The Bible passage that refers to the earth being destroyed in fire and heat refers to destruction of spiritual ruling powers, human governments, and social arrangements. Within these three epochs are other subdivisions, the patriarchal age, Jewish age, and gospel age, millennial age, and ages to come. One distinctive teaching that the majority of Bible students affirm and that Russell taught is that Christ returned in 1874. His presence right now is invisible and secret. The Dawn Bible Students book Armageddon Then World Peace says that the overthrow of the last Jewish king was in 606 BC and following this was a long time called the Times of the Gentiles. They say that the Time of the Gentiles is a period of 2,520 years explained by referring to Nebuchadnezzar's dream of the image of a man. For example, the man's legs of iron represent Rome, and the toes represent the divided Roman Empire. The times of the Gentiles then ended in 1914. The outbreak of World War I in that year is viewed as a proof that Jesus is now subduing the nations. On sin, Bible students believe that the first man Adam's entire posterity was condemned when he sinned, but Jesus died in Adam's place, buying the whole human race with the authority to restore it. Babies are born with inherited sin on the broad road that leads to destruction. The solution to sin is salvation. The purpose of Jesus' first coming was to provide a ransom to redeem the world.
Knowledge and acceptance of Jesus Christ are necessary to achieve salvation, but as we'll discuss in more detail later, the whole world will be resurrected during the millennium and will receive an opportunity to live forever as perfect humans. However, for those who are alive on earth, they still have a chance for something more, the highest form of life, immortal spiritual life of the divine nature. However, more than simply repenting of sins and living righteously is necessary to obtain this. Walking on the narrow way requires more than believing Jesus died for our sins and being justified by his blood. Once we have accepted salvation from condemnation in Adam, we are invited to present our bodies a living sacrifice wholly acceptable unto God. A person seeking this higher way will surrender earthly possessions and hopes. Worldly goods become the Lord's who makes them a test of stewardship. The majority of people claiming to be Christian, those who appreciate that Jesus died for their sins, do not progress to make a full consecration and are not members of the body of Christ. They will have an advantage in the millennium, but will at best become perfect humans on the earthly plane, not spiritual life. Calvinism is rejected and compared to a message of bad news and unavoidable condemnation for billions of people. Bible students reject Pentecostalism and the Charismatic Movement. The book, Speaking in Tongues, What Are Its Implications on BibleStudents.com, presents a negative view of modern tongue speaking and a view open to cessationism, though not stating so in absolute terms. It does say, The tongues, as foretold in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 8, were already in the process of ceasing in the Apostles' day, and unintelligible ecstatic utterances miss the basic scriptural logic for the gift of tongues. Similarly, ChristianQuestions.com says that miraculous spiritual gifts ceased around the end of the first century when the New Testament was completed. The Chicago Bible Students website says on the topic of hell that the Greek Hades and Hebrew Sheol correspond exactly and that they simply mean the grave or death, destruction. Every person dies and goes there, but Christians will be resurrected. In the Dawn Bible Students booklet, The Truth About Hell, they say that this is not a place of hellfire and torment, but rather people there are unconscious, asleep in death until the resurrection. After the resurrection, those who finally do not repent will again die, but death is annihilation in this case, not torment. Willful sinners will not be kept alive forever in some place of misery. They will simply die, never to awaken again. On end times, Bible students believe that some Bible prophecies are being fulfilled today. The end of the age brings the regathering of Israel, and they list as fulfillments of this things like the Zionist movement, Balfour Declaration, and reestablishment of the state of Israel. God is calling some people to be of the church during the Christian age, but everyone else will come to understand the truth in the 1,000-year reign of Christ. God is not trying to convert the world right now. He only is trying to convert a little flock, a chaste bride class. The bride class is limited to only 144,000 individuals. Just because someone is a Bible student doesn't mean they will be in the little flock of 144,000 because God's standards are very high. In a lesson by Bible student Ken Rawson, he stated, Of all of us that are in this room, only a very, very few will end up in the 144,000. There will also be a great crowd that is taken out of the world. This means there are three classes of people in the 1,000-year kingdom, the anointed little flock of 144,000, the great crowd, and the world of mankind. During the 1,000-year reign, Satan will be bound and Christians will be judges and priests, trying to give every member of the world every help and opportunity to attain eternal life. Jesus' ransom for all guarantees that everyone will be awakened from the sleep of death and given an accurate knowledge of the truth. Those who are willing will be restored to mental, moral, and physical perfection. There is a final test that if passed, grants everlasting life on earth. This thousand-year period is what the Bible is referring to when it mentions a judgment day. They contrast this with a view they say is not the scriptural view, that the judgment day is a 24-hour day coming from a literal interpretation of the parable of Jesus dividing the sheep from the goats and the great white throne in Revelation. Those who believe in Christ during the millennium will be restored to original human perfection that Adam lost in the fall. Only those who believe before the millennium, that is, the Christian church, will be changed by God to have a spiritual rather than human nature. In other words, God will save both the world and the church from Adamic condemnation through Jesus Christ, but only the church will become partakers of the divine nature. Of how many of the earth will accept Christ, statements generally indicate a great majority will. For example, they say, When the work of restitution is complete, at the end of a thousand years, the whole human race will stand approved, without spot or wrinkle, in the presence of God, excepting the few incorrigible who will be removed. 
Leading up to the 1,000-year kingdom is another time called the Day of the Lord or Day of Jehovah, which is when God's kingdom is gradually set up under Christ. It is not a literal 24-hour day, but a period of years. As Pastor Russell wrote in 1916 and is still taught by Bible students today, 1914 marked the end of Gentile times and the current time is the Day of the Lord. Today, the Bible students say that it has come as a thief in the night in the sense that its approach was not recognized by the world in general. On the family, Bible students say that marriage is between a man and a woman, and homosexuality is a sin whether promiscuous or not. One Bible student's website says that nothing in the Bible prohibits contraception. Beyond the Watchtower website states that to marry a divorced person is to commit adultery, with the exception being if they divorced because their spouse was sexually immoral. Bible students oppose abortion. For example, it is listed as a worldly practice on the End Time Bible Report quarterly. On the use of alcohol, ChristianQuestions.com says, Wine is not forbidden in the Bible, but drinking to excess causing drunkenness is strongly warned against. Bible students do not teach that Christians need to observe the clean and unclean food restrictions of the Old Testament. On giving, several Bible student websites say, We take no collections. All expenses are met by unsolicited, voluntary contributions. On tithing, Christian Question says, Although we do not see any New Testament scriptural basis for tithing, in principle we commend your desire to regularly support your congregation. However, you are first and foremost obligated to pay your medical bills and all other financial obligations before you can make contributions to your church. In answer to the question, do Christians have a place in politics, the Chicago Bible Students website says, no, and do not become entangled with the things of this world. ChristianQuestions.com says that fighting back in self-defense is acceptable, but not if one has the intent to harm. Killing an armed combatant in the context of warfare is not sinful in itself. Unlike Jehovah's Witnesses, Bible students often are fine with the celebration of Christmas. Chicago Bible Student says also that the giving of gifts seems especially appropriate. Meetings of the church are normally on the first day of the week. Like Charles Russell himself, Bible students have writings and teachings about pyramids. The Bible Student Archives website has a page on Great Pyramid in Time and Prophecy, which says, among other things, the Great Pyramid of Egypt clearly accentuates the centricity of Christ in abolishing death and bringing to life the two salvations life, and immortality. Christian Questions podcast had a program on the Great Pyramid, God's message board, and says, This Bible in stone is stunning in its depiction of science, geography, mathematics, and the plan of God that includes salvation for every man, woman, and child that ever lived through the sacrifice of Jesus. Bible student congregations are self-governing. Bible student organizations often self-identify as non-denominational, like Columbus Bible Students and Christian Questions. Bible student website HarvestTruths.com says, The Bible students are an independent Christian group who are not affiliated with any established denominations. Neither do we subscribe to many of the traditional denominational practices. As for offices in the church, the Kingdom Herald says, These servants or ministers are unpaid and elected from within our local congregations on an annual basis basis based on scriptural qualifications listed in 1 Timothy 3 and Titus 1. On whether women should be pastors or elders, the Christian Questions website says no. How many Bible students are there today? There's no real way to know. Bible student Ken Rawson said several thousands, and Beyond the Watchtower simply says they are few in numbers. Congregations may be known as ecclesias. Most do not hold any real estate, but rather rent facilities or meet in homes. There is an annual conference, the Christian Believers Conference, held in Massachusetts for over 100 years, as well as many other conferences and conventions each year. Herald Magazine is a bi-monthly magazine that teaches Bible student beliefs. There are also groups which began in the Bible student movement and, like the Jehovah's Witnesses, have now accepted different beliefs. For example, Free Bible Students and Christian Discipling Ministries International which also holds to a Unitarian position but says that Christ has not yet returned, for example. Of course, the most common comparison for Bible students is the Jehovah's Witnesses. The difference that Bible students emphasize the most is that they don't have a central controlling authority like the Jehovah's Witnesses governing body. Other differences include that Bible students don't have a problem with blood transfusions, don't have a problem with the depiction of the cross with a crossbeam, generally saying that though the view can't be proven, neither can the other. They believe that every person will be resurrected, while Jehovah's Witnesses teach that some people have already been annihilated. If you've enjoyed learning about this movement, you may also be interested to learn about Biblical Unitarians. My video on the Church of God General Conference will introduce you to this group. Click here to watch it.